I'm joined now by Mary Ann Jackson, an Intermountain Medical Center diabetes educator. And many of us don't know that there is such a thing as, as pre-diabetes. Explain what that is. Pre-diabetes is when your blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not high enough to be diagnosed with full-blown diabetes. And you can be at any age at this point to be diagnosed with that? Yeah, any age. Um, we can draw a laboratory test called a hemoglobin A1C, which can tell us if your blood sugar levels have been running higher than normal. Talk about the risk factors. I know for me, I've got several. I'm Asian, I had gestational diabetes, and I have it in my family. Yeah, you mentioned a couple of really good ones right yeah. there. We're looking at um, ethnic ethnicity. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you've had gestational diabetes or you had a, a large for gestational weight baby, usually over nine pounds, um, physical inactivity or a sedentary lifestyle, being overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. um, also, advanced age puts you at risk for that. Okay, and are there any symptoms? So we've talked about, you know, things that we're born with or what we can do with our diet, but are there any symptoms of knowing, well, my blood sugar is just a bit off? Can you feel that? What are some of the things that might give you an idea? With pre-diabetes, pre there's not a ton because your blood sugar levels aren't like extremely high usually. Um, and so we're looking for, with diabetes, people are generally tired. They are um, have increased thirst, increased urination, um, increased risk for infection. You might notice you're getting sick more than usual. Mm. Um, so it's mostly just important to look for those risk factors and kind of, if you want to go to um, do I have prediabetes, I think it's .org, you can take a risk test to see if you have risk factors. And if you do, then it's a good idea to talk to your doctor about getting tested. For Absolutely. It. If you already know some genetic things that are working against you, then maybe it is time to check with your doctor in any way. But having prediabetes, there is some good news because you can maybe keep it at bay for a while, uh, depending on diet potentially. Yeah, um, having diabetes developed from prediabetes is preventable. Uh, we're looking for people to make lifestyle modifications if you are diagnosed with prediabetes. So those include increasing your physical activity to about um, 150 to 300 minutes per week, which is 30 to 60 minutes most days of the week. And it doesn't have to be huge things. It could just be going for a walk or gardening or mowing your lawn, um, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. We're also looking for dietary modifications. So decreasing the amount of carbohydrates and the overall caloric intake, um, striving for a 5 to 10 percent total body uh, weight loss. And is it just carbs or what are some of the things you might want to increase in your diet? So carbs cause the most dramatic immediate rise in blood sugar and so that's why we're hyper focused on carbohydrates with a diabetic diet. Um, and following a diabetic diet is generally just a healthful recommendation for most of our population even if you don't have diabetes or have prediabetes. And does it mean if you have prediabetes that you will certainly get diabetes? No, it doesn't have to mean it mean that. Um, it's it's preventable, it, for the most part. Just depending on what your risk factors are, um, it's you can keep it at bay. Excellent. So where can we find more information? Um, so if you want more information, you can go to intermountain.net um, and search for diabetes. We have information that way. Also, the ADA, the American Diabetes mm -hmm. Association, has wonderful resources on their website. All right, excellent. Marianne Jackson here to help us out and walk us through pre-diabetes. And for more information, you can head to our website at goodforutah.com. Glenn?